Hey guys, my name's I Ride Taz, and this is Doug, my 2017 Royal Enfield Classic 500 in chrome and graphite. And today, I've just been saving up a couple of different things, which I actually haven't done a video on before, uh, but I wanted to group together into one quick video to show some of the customizations that I've done that weren't worth doing a video by themselves. And the first is the belts. I've got one on this side on the battery cover and one on the other side for the sort of quote unquote glove box. Uh, ultimately, they're just belts I bought from the thrift shop or what we call an op shop. That leather belt was 50 cents. Uh, it was a 34 inch belt. And so ultimately I just poked it around the back of the battery and in front of the battery box cover, uh, did it up had to punch some holes in it to get it to do up and then I just cut the tail round uh, it doesn't serve any real purpose I just really like the looks of it but if it does serve a purpose it basically just adds some security to this chrome battery box cover which I have seen on bikes in the second hand market uh, can fall off um, I didn't want mine to fall off so I put the belt on it I love the looks easy fix Next thing I wanted to demonstrate guys is the Time for Bikes white faced quartz movement stem nut clock I bought from the UK for Doug. These are quite expensive, they're probably twice the price that you'd find on eBay for a similar item from uh, India or China, but I think this one is worth the extra money for the waterproofing and the quality of the item. I got a white face dial because it matches the dials that are stock on Doug and it goes over that big thick fat factory stem nut that sits in that position. Uh, it was about $69 delivered, it took about three weeks to arrive when I bought it but I couldn't be happier with it and I think it's a great addition to the bike and realistically it just helps me tell the time and covers up that big ugly stem nut. It's a great addition, timeforbikes.com. This is the pedestrian slasher or front number plate that I've got on Doug. Uh, this is an eBay purchase and it was about $35. It does require you to drill two holes through your uh, front mudguard to install, which can be very scary for people. Just mark it up carefully and when you drive the drill down, you want to drill down vertically, but then you want to oval it a little bit to by sort of just swinging the drill bit backward and forward, just to provide the slight movement that you need to deal with the round uh, sort of convex nature of the mudguard. It was really easy install. It took probably more time to build up the courage to drill through the mudguard than it did actually to put it on and install. These are again error correct for the bike. They haven't run front number plates on bikes in England for years and they're referred to as pedestrian slashes because this would actually be quite dangerous if you hit someone or glance someone. So like uh, they do in Australia, these days they run number plates on the back. While we're back here, just want to show you a rear light protector I bought off eBay. This one was from India as well. Just got a couple of torque screws that you use to get it on and off. And it just cleans up the back of the bike, I believe. It just gives it a little bit more strength and waterproofing and protection. These bikes don't have the best electrical uh, system in my experience, so that just helps that and protects that. So guys, that was just a really, really quick overview of a couple of different mods or customizations that I've done to Doug over the weeks that weren't worth doing a video by themselves for, but ultimately I piled together into one quick video. Guys, my name's Ira Taz. Till next time, guys, I am out.